Hi all, welcome to Code Affection. With this video, we have started a video series on the basics of React Hook Form, and which is gonna be a free extract from my Udemy course on React Hook Form library. So this YouTube video series will be around one and a half hours of the actual course, and this would be enough to thoroughly understand the fundamentals of React Hook Form. And if you are really serious about React Hook Form or building React Forms, you can always check out the rest of the Udemy course. The link with maximum discount will be there inside the video description and inside the first comment of this video. Now, this is an introduction video discussing what is React Hook Form, why do we need them, what are things it is capable of, and why specifically React Hook Form when there are other form libraries. So without further ado, let's get started. Undoubtedly, the React framework is an exceptional JavaScript framework that outperforms its competition at doing many things. But one thing it's bad at out of the box is building forms. You must have experienced it already. The typical way of building forms in React applications most often involves spending more time in preventing default behaviors of HTML form, managing and their form data with state variables leads to poor performance, and implementation of custom requirements necessitate from scratch development, etc. and etc. The list of issues in constructing React form without a form library goes like that. So there comes the most popular React form library, React Hook Form. It's a form library for React applications that makes it really easy for you to build scalable and flexible forms with better performance. It makes working with React forms a lot smoother and easier. At present, the package is getting downloaded by more than 5 million people on average per week. And it is available in both React web applications and React Native for mobile apps. The library could be used in any front-end app that built with React Framework. For example, Next.js. Here is the official website of the library, reacthookform.com. The documentation is quite detailed and well-structured with real-world examples provided when necessary to illustrate the topic. More about navigating the documentation could be discussed later. Now let's briefly discuss what all things we are going to achieve with React Hook Form and let's see its promising features. First of all, the comparison between React Hook Form versus normal forms. For that, we will implement the basic needs of a React form without a form library and then we will do the same with React Hook Form. So that we will get a quick picture of how efficient is the library. And then we will discuss the difficulties in creating React form without a form library like React Hook Form. And once we understand the relevance of React Hook Form, we will get started with fundamentals of React Hook Form. Discussing how to register a form control to React Hook Form, how the library is able to manage the form data without React state variables, and then how to pass default values, etc. And etc. Followed by a performance comparison with forms created through React Hook Form and that of normal forms. For the performance comparison throughout the course, we have created a reusable component for counting the number of re rendering inside individual form controls and subform components. Remember that creating performance form is the most highlighted feature of the library React Hook Form. And then the most important requirement of a form, which is validation of form data. For that, the library has built in easy to use validation methods and provision for asynchronous validation, validation of interdependent fields like password and confirm password and then the custom validation for any complex validation requirements. And then we'll be creating reusable components for form controls and subforms for future convenience and for performance reasons. To do so, React Hook Form allows nested field properties in form data and it will be really helpful to divide a complex form into multiple easy to manage subforms. Same is the case with building and managing form data in a multi-step form. After that, we have a dedicated section talking all about the form state indications like error feedback and other metadata about the form. And when necessary, corresponding feedbacks are displayed inside the frontend at real time. And then we have established subscription to form control values and form state indications, through which you will have the provision to switch on and off the subscription when needed. These subscriptions helps us in implementing various custom requirements while constructing the form. And then comes dynamic generation of form fields, in which we'll be discussing how to generate and manage dynamically generated fields during runtime. 
and how to perform CRUD operations on these dynamically generated field collection. And then this discussion leads to the inline table editor where we have implemented a fully fledged inline table editor or data grid view which is a great concern in data driven applications. Along with implementing CRUD operations on array of records, we have discussed how to calculate aggregate summaries from the table like grand total of a purchase. And then we'll be dealing with requirements involving interdependent fields. Like selecting a product from this drop down should fill the corresponding price per item in this field. Or selecting a country from this drop down should populate the state drop down with states from the selected country. And then we have discussed how to deal with submission of form data for saving the record to a persistent DB collection, including the reset operation of the form. And then it necessitates the next topic of discussion populating a fresh form which consists of retrieving an already submitted record back to the form and populate the same inside the fresh form. And during the waiting period of the asynchronous retrieval request, we'll also be showing a loading spinner. In between, we also covered how to make use of the promising feature isolated re-rendering for extra performance of the form, which is definitely an interesting topic to cover and there is a lot to gain in terms of performance. Then comes the integration of React hook form with React UI components like Material UI and Design and React Select. All of them provides sophisticated form field components with all necessary features. Integrating them into the app allows us to focus on implementing new features and rest of the concerns inside the app. And then finally the integration with schema validation libraries like Zord and Yep. These are the popular dedicated JavaScript libraries for validation purpose. They allow us to define schema to express any complex validation requirements including interdependent and asynchronous validations with their built-in wide range of validation methods. Both of these integrations allows us to take advantages from other wonderful packages or libraries in various aspects of form creation. All of these and more are explained with a real-world project built with a fully-fledged form for a restaurant food delivery app. Considering best practices and clean code culture, we'll apply everything we learn from this course to this project. Along with this series of videos, you will get access to the lecture-by-lecture -lecture GitHub repository. And apart from that, there is a cheat sheet of the library annotated with discuss lecture number and it will be really helpful for future revisions once you complete the course. Now, why React hook form when there are other React form libraries? You could see the detailed answer inside this FAQ section. Here is the comparison between React hook form with other familiar form libraries like Formic and Redux form. Now, as I said already, it has minimum re-rendering when compared with other form libraries. In case of Formic, it uses local state and in case of Redux form, it makes use of the library Redux. Both of these state management systems causes the whole form component to re-render as we type in containing form controls. We'll be demonstrating the same in upcoming videos. And its package size is literally half that of its main competitor. And one of the reasons for being this super light library is that it does not have any other dependencies. And when compared to other form libraries, it allows us to integrate with a wide variety of schema validation libraries. So I hope that answers why React hook form and not any other form library. Now, rest of the factors in this comparison will be easy for you to understand as you go through the rest of the videos. So for that and more, see you in the next video. To get notified when I upload new videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit from this. Have a nice day. Bye.